With the recent re 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 release of Skyrim, the ability to fish was added to the game, which, I'll be honest, I didn't think much of. That was, until I realised the fishing rod can be used as a weapon, and as such the idea of beating the main story with the rod seemed like a no-brainer. However, I then made this joke on Twitter, and since then the idea has really grown on me, so in other words, today's the day we figure out, can you beat Skyrim as Big the Cat? For those wondering, what this means is that the only weapon I'll be able to use for the entirety of the run is the fishing rod, and then just to make things a little more fun, I'm also going to do it while looking like Big the Cat from Sonic the Hedgehog. Now, with all that out of the way, let's begin. Now, first things first, making Big isn't really possible given Skyrim's character creator. So, to help out, I downloaded this mod by Jordan B 500 that was thankfully ported to the Xbox version by Meister B, which allows me to change my Khajiit skin colour to purple, as last I checked it's not a natural colour for most cats. After a few minutes I managed to come up with something that resembles Big the best I could, and from there it was through Helgen just as normal. Our first stop on this grand adventure is the Standing Stones just near Riverwood. This is because the Fishing Rod is a relatively weak one-handed weapon, so I'm here to take the Warrior Stone to make getting the relevant damage perks a little faster. Unlike the last Skyrim run, I don't have to traverse half of the world just to get the Fishing Rod. In fact, one can be found just outside Riverwood on the way to Whiterun. Rather than take the thing and immediately start looking for people to kill, I decide to partake in its primary function and sit down and fish. The fishing isn't too involved, you just look for a spot with fishing supplies, activate said supplies, and then cast your lure and once the line starts getting pulled like crazy, tap the A button once, and just like that, you've caught a fish. Upon getting my first catch, the spade fish, I immediately get a new quest called Angler Acquaintances. Well, seeing how this will probably be the only time I use this feature in a video, I made the decision that I would see this fishing quest through to the end. After all, Big is a fisherman by trade, and let's not forget, while fulfilling his apparent destiny as Dragonborn is certainly important, the real motive for Big being in Skyrim is of course to find Froggy, so perhaps we will get some clues to his location during these fishing adventures. I continue to fish here until I run out of fish, and in the process I catch myself some River Betty and a few Brook Bass. Before making my way to Whiterun to get the cart to Riften, I decide that I should probably find some fitting clothes to make myself look more like the character. I managed to procure myself a rather fitting set of gloves, and then went and paid some nearby bandits a visit, not only so I could loot some shoes, but also to test out the rod in combat. As of right now, it's honestly not the worst weapon in the world. Sure, the damage is a pitiful 3 at the moment, but you could also swing the thing faster than a sword by the looks of it, so at the very least, that doesn't make it completely useless. After I stab the last bandit through the back of the head, I begin to make my way for Whiterun. I end up getting into a scuffle with a few Imperials on the way, but it honestly wasn't that bad. I was able to just stay on the defensive for most of the fight and slowly whittle them down over time. On the bright side, after this encounter I managed to level up and could now increase the damage of the fishing rod from 3 to 4. I'm sure this will make all the difference in the world. Taking the carriage to Riften, I get briefly sidetracked from my fishing journey and end up helping out Brynjolf with his thieving problems. I should mention at this point I tried to sharpen the fishing rod at a grindstone, but sadly that isn't something we can do. Finally I get to the Riften fishery and get two quests from Berea and swims in deep water. Deep water just wants me to catch four different fish, two of which I'm able to catch right here at the fishery, along with a majestic tankard fish. As for Varia, she wants me to catch a juvenile mud crab that seems to be near Whiterun. So travelling back I go to make my way to this mud crab when I'm suddenly stopped by the guards and thrown in jail. I'm not sure which of Big's crimes this was for, but we don't have time to ponder that question as there are fish and frogs to be captured and saved. To that end I use the grating in the floor along with a single lockpick I smuggled in to escape my cell, retrieve my items, and then sneak my way out of the dungeons and get back to fishing. The mud crab is actually further away than I initially thought, so it takes a little bit to run over to it. On the way I end up getting into a scuffle with a few skeletons. It's not too bad, although the one with the hood is able to do some decent damage with his ice magic. I wouldn't even say that's the most memorable part of this encounter, I'd say that happened once I defeated him. I honestly have no idea how a mammoth of all things was able to sneak up on me. Right after this I made another pit stop to carefully sneak into the cave at Sleeping Tree Camp to grab a few bottles of Sleeping Tree Sap to sell when I get back to Whiterun. Luckily I make it out before the giants can turn me into a pancake, and then shortly after I arrive at where the mud crab is meant to be. I was full ready to fish for it, but it turns out the little guy is just crawling around and as such I can just grab him. I then turn my rod on what was probably his parents. If Batman has taught me anything, in doing this the baby mud crab will grow up to be big and strong with only minor trauma along the way. While I could hand in the crab now, I still have some fish to catch for deep water, so I instead head back to the city to sell the tree sap to Isolde, and then I use the money she gave me to purchase fishing maps from Bellathor. Well, it turns out I didn't actually need these maps just yet, as I decided to travel back to Riverwood to fish there, and I just so happened to catch a carp and pogfish, which were the last two fish that I needed. Once I turn these quests in I get three more, two of which just require me to catch five catfish and one glassfish, and then deliver them to the respective buyers. And then the next part of the fishing mastery quest from Deep Waters, which not only has me go and catch more fish, but also has a side objective to go and find his lucky fisherman's hut. Well, Deep Waters quest sounds a lot more interesting to me, so I head off towards Iverstead, as that was the last known location of his hat. 
It was a danger-free journey for the most part, except for when I arrived at the lake with a hat and I got into a fight with some treasure hunters. Sadly for them, they were no match for Big's broad foo, and as such they perished. While swimming through the lake to get the hat, I also found another rare sea creature in the form of the illustrious water rabbit. After I composed myself from seeing such a sight, I managed to make my way to the nearby fishing spot and managed to reel in the lucky hat. It has the unique ability to make it rain while fishing, and considering the fish we are after only come out in rainstorms, it certainly makes my job a lot easier. I'm able to catch all the fish I need except for one, which is the pygmy sunfish. This little thing took me forever to find. I tried back at the docks, at Riverwood, at the Guardian Stones, and I even followed the river coming at a white run, but to no avail. During that last one, I even ended up getting into a scuffle with the bandits of Alfheim Towers. And they were pretty tough, but the sheer speed in which I can attack with the fishing rod meant that even the bandit chief found it difficult to find the time to attack me. Eventually, I had to look it up, and it turns out the best place to find them is just south of Windhelm near the Dragon Burial Mound. So I tried there, and wouldn't you know it, I didn't even need to fish for them as they were just swimming around everywhere. So I picked the fish up and then went back to the Rifted Docks once more to turn them in. To my surprise, I was given the Argonian Fishing Rod, which actually does more damage than the normal rod I've been using. Granted, it's only one extra damage, but I'll take what I can get. As for the other two quests I mentioned earlier, one of them was just your usual fetch quests, nothing to say about that one. However, the other one that had me go to Falkreath takes an odd turn, is when I hand over the fish, I get a note from the Jarl where I need to scare one of his guards with a skooma addiction by giving him an invisibility potion disguised as skooma. Admittedly, this did get a laugh out of me. I can almost taste it. Oh no. By the gods, this can't be happening. Somebody do something! Staying safe, I hope. After this, I caught a goldfish for a child in Whiterun, and then it was apparently time for a fishing contest. Well, at least I've led to believe it's a contest. Turns out it's a ruse, as after I meet up with my would-be competitor at the supposed fishing spot, I am jumped by his backup and promptly executed. Next time, I know what I'm in for, so I managed to take out one of these bandits by myself. Problem is, the rod still isn't all that great, and I have to use a decent amount of my healing supplies just to stay alive. Clearly fighting them myself was getting me nowhere, but it just so happens we are right next to Morthal, so I lead them back to the town and they are rather quickly dispatched by the guards. After looting the old man, I managed to find a journal detailing the magical ring of his that fell in the river nearby. Naturally, I head there and fish it up. It's actually a pretty good ring with some unique enchantments like increasing your base running speed. Seeing how you can also fish up weapons and armour, this gives me an idea for a future run where I can only use items I get from fishing. Let me know if that's something you'd all be interested in. My next fishing related task doesn't actually have me go fishing at all, rather I'm to go investigate the increase in mud crab attacks near Dawnstar. Sounds easy enough, right? Well, it isn't. On the way, I end up getting chased by a frost troll. I tried to fight it, but I think its health regen was just far too much for how little damage I'm doing right now. Well, turns out that troll wasn't a problem for long, as the frenzied mud crabs I've been sent to dispatch end up killing the frost troll. You heard that right. A frost troll was killed by mud crabs. Apparently, whatever has angered these crabs has turned them into absolute killing machines. I tried to fight them myself, but not only do they pinch me to pieces, but they also have a lot more health than usual. Well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, so rather than deal with them myself, I led them to the nearby Legion camp, where the Legion was able to get rid of these crazy crustaceans, although not before suffering heavy losses themselves. On the bright side, when all's said and done, I get my reward from Varia, which is the Alakiri fishing rod. It does the exact same damage as the Argonian rod I'm currently using, but while the Argonian rod is good for catching large fish, the Alakiri rod works better for small fish. Once more, keeping up with the variety in this quest line, my next quest is a bounty from Ulfric Stormcock? Oh god. Anyway, he's asking me to help with a particularly deadly horker that's been killing people near the farms outside of Windhelm. Much like the mud crabs, this isn't your average horker either. Other than having more health and being a bit larger than a normal one, he also has a drain vitality effect on at all times, so just standing near him hurts you and also heals him. What this means is my DPS is too low to do any sustaining damage. Don't worry though, it's not the end of the run, as thanks to my two fishing rods, I can now assume the forbidden technique of the jeweled rod berserk cat stance. Joking aside, this actually goes much better than I could have imagined, and within no time at all, Fang Tusk here is defeated. Turns out the reason for his life draining error was a vampire ring that he ate. It's another unique ring that lets the player use the vampire drain life spell without the actual need to become one. At this point, I'd been doing these fishing quests for close to four hours and needed a quick break, and seeing how I just discovered the power of the jewel rod stance, I believe now is as good a time as any to start a bit of the main quest, so I head off to Bleak Falls Barrow. Now, either it's because Bleak Falls is meant to be tackled level one, or maybe it's to do with my newfound rod strength, but bandits and Draugr alike barely had a chance to get a hit in before I reeled them into the afterlife. It's been a long time since I've messed around with dual wielding builds, and I genuinely forgot how strong they can be with the right setup. The only part that posed a real threat was the wounded frostbite spider, as it had the ability to poison me, but even so, I never had to back off to heal, and was able to just keep up the onslaught until it went down. You would think the Overlord would be a problem, but all he really is is a Draugr with more health, who occasionally uses shouts. Realising that I am more prepared than I initially thought for the main quest, I decide to refocus my fishing efforts, and as such, it's back to Dawnstar to find some ice fish. 
It's not a new way to fish or anything, I'm just looking for a few species that only come out in cold environments, and the area around Dawnstar was clearly the right choice, as it didn't take long for me to catch everything I required. Back at the docks to get paid, and I'm given two more assignments, those being part four of the Deepwaters fishing trials, and another Radiant-like quest where I'm to give private lessons to a lady of Markarth. Turns out by lessons, all it means is catch three fish in the city while she watches, and get rewarded for it. Not that I'm complaining, as it's easy money. Speaking of money, there isn't a whole lot I can think to spend it on right now, so I just go back to Whiterun and spend it all on one-handed lessons, as it seems to be the most sensible thing to do. As for Deepwaters trials now, I am tasked with fishing underground, in caves. Thankfully, they aren't too out of the way, as a matter of fact, one of them is Amber Shard Mine, which needs no introduction, as everyone has raided this place more than a few times. Even though I didn't come here right from Helgen like I usually do, by this point they have still yet to upgrade their gear, so they are really not prepared for the wrath that is Big the Cub. Fishing here, I find a couple of the fish I need, but more importantly, I find this scorpion fish that isn't on the list, but clearly that's important as the game makes one of its special sounds. To get the last two fish that I need, those being the glass catfish and direfish, I just head east of Morthal until I get to the spider infested root cave, and once the spiders are dealt with, I can fish to my heart's content and then take the fish back to Riften, where I then move on to the last stage of becoming a legendary fisherman, which is to catch four rare fish. Well, technically three rare fish, as that scorpion fish was one of them. So I spent close to an hour looking for these last three fish. So I'm just going to be nice and tell you exactly where I had the best luck for each one. Also, according to the book, you have to catch these fish with one of the two special rods, otherwise they don't show up. Firstly, I caught the liar tail at Riverwood with the Alakiri rod. Next, I was able to catch the angler at the same spot where the friendly mudcrabs attacked earlier with the use of the Argonian rod. Apparently, you can catch it at Dawnstar down by the docks, but after 20 minutes of fishing there, I never caught one, whereas it was literally the very first thing that I caught at the mudcrab area. And finally, the angelfish can be found in lakes with the use of the Alakiri rod. I tried a few different lakes, such as the ones near the Guardian Stones, but never had any luck. That was until I went to the lake just to the right of Yearman's Hall, near Iverstead. This is the same place where I got that lucky hat earlier, so I suppose if you already had the Alakiri rod by that point, you could catch an angel fish then to save yourself the trouble. With that, we have our last fish, so I return to swims in deep water, hand over the fish, complete the fishing legend quest, and for my trouble, I am rewarded with a unique dagger. It's not a bad weapon by any means, as you can see on screen, but I won't lie, I was kind of hoping for some sort of legendary fishing rod. But oh well. Speaking of special fishing rods, only now do I think to go and check if I can enchant them. The answer is no, but that's alright, I wouldn't want to make them stupidly overpowered anyway. While I've fulfilled Big's purpose of becoming the greatest fisherman in all the land, let's not forget I've yet to find that damn frog, so it's time to continue the main quest and see if we run into him. As I already have the dragon stone, I skip right to the dragon fight, but not before giving the Yarl a gift as a peace offering. This dragon wasn't all that interesting as he kept getting distracted by nearby wolves, and as such I wasn't able to do a whole lot while the guards just picked him off from afar. Rather than head straight to the Greybeards, I instead take the advice from the comments on last week's Skyrim video and go and obtain the Lord Stone for some much needed protection. With my newly acquired damage resistances, I figured I'd make my way up to the Greybeards would be a piece of cake. And it was, but my hubris got the better of me and as such the Frost Troll put me back in my place rather quickly. Ignoring him on my next attempt at life, I make my way to the Greybeards where Big learns how to shout for a bit before the Greybeards quickly get sick of him and send him off to Ustengrad to be rid of him. Well, unlucky for them, by now I've cooked and made so many different types of stamina recovery based foods that I essentially never have to stop doing the incredibly OP dual wield power attack. Naturally, this makes short work of the necromancers and even shorter work of the Draugr, meaning I can be disappointed in the lack of horn in record time. Back to Riverwood, and rather than fish, I take lives this time, and then it's off to Kynes Grove to see how Dragon Number 2 fares. I actually marked Kynes Grove on the map earlier, and clearly the game didn't plan on you fast travelling here, because when I did, all the soldiers were alive for a bit, before they realised they shouldn't be, and all dropped dead. When you know it, when it came time to throw down with the dragon, the same plan as before with Ustengrab works wonders, as I just never let up in my unrelenting flurry of attacks, and within a few minutes, the poor lizard gets pummeled to a pulp. After witnessing a giant purple cat beat up a mythical creature with nothing but fishing supplies, Delphine comes to the realisation just how strong we truly are, and asks us to head off to the Thalmor Embassy. Before that though, I have an adventure of my own to go on, and it's to find the Elder Scroll. Big has gone to the ends of the earth to find a frog before, so locating a mystical piece of paper is child's play. With the scroll hidden somewhere on Big's person, it's back to Riverwood, where I encounter a hostile thief. He doesn't manage to hurt me, but sadly in the chaos, he ends up killing Alvor the blacksmith. Despite the fact we never spoke, Alvor must have considered me a better person than his own wife and daughter, as no more than 20 seconds after his death, a nearby courier hands me a letter of inheritance and 100 gold that the late blacksmith has left for me. Back on track, I don't think I have ever had the Embassy go this smooth before. It's not even because of my unending onslaught, but rather the defensive benefits of the Lordstone that just lets me tank magic damage like it's nobody's business. I even managed to save Malborn for like 15 seconds before he attempts to fight a Frost Troll and promptly gets shut down. No time to mourn, his death was his own doing this time, and it's back to Riften, not to fish, but to find Esbern. I tried to just run past the lowlifes in the ratways to save time, but turns out they really don't like being ignored, and then for probably the first time in Skyrim history, a Khajiit loses a fistfight. 
I rectify my mistake by taking the time to bonk everyone on the next attempt, and then once more easily cut my way through the Thalmor, doubly so whenever I meet up with Esbern, as his magic is able to one-shot most of them. With Esbern and Delphine reunited, it's off the Aldwin's Wall to gain some information, before heading back to the Greybeards, where I completely forgot to give them the horn earlier. So, once I have my initiation, I learn the clear sky shout, and begin to push my way up the mountain. It may sound like I'm blazing through a lot of the story here, and that's because I was. After I got the necessary perks to maximise my dual-wielding fishing rod, not much stood in my way. At least when we get to the top of High Hrothgar, we meet a new interesting and important character, and I don't mean Parsonax. Look who it is, everybody. I found Froggy. Goodness knows how he made it up here. So, with Big reunited with his best friend, nothing else can distract him from the task at hand, so I read the Elder Scroll, learn Dragon Rain, and then begin the first fight with Alduin. Unlike the 20 plus minute slog fest that I usually tend to find myself in at this point of the game, this actually goes by in about a quarter of the time. Turns out, putting every single level up into health paid off as I tanked even his most damaging attacks. After he runs away with his tail between his legs, it's off to hold a council, capture a dragon, murder a lot of Draugr, and then I can finally enter the last stage of the game. There's not much to say here, is there? If I can beat up Alduin by myself with zero issues, what hope does he really have when I've got backup? To that end, Big saves the day by killing the world leader, gets transported back to Tamriel, he and Froggy enjoy their time fishing together, and I can answer the question that nobody has ever asked, yes, you can indeed beat Skyrim as Big the Cat. Well, this got surprisingly easy at the halfway point. Honestly did not think the addition of an extra rod in my left hand would be as helpful as it was. I guess it just goes to show, never underestimate the power of a well-optimized dual-wielding build. Obviously, if you were wanting to optimize this build yourself, I would suggest playing as an orc for the berserker damage, plus you'd probably want to wear armor and enchant it to increase your one-handed skill. Regards, that's going to be on this challenge video. If you enjoyed what you saw, consider giving the video a like and you're interested in more challenges in the future. For if you to subscribe to one of these videos, I'd have a week. My name is Nerds. I say everyone, I'll see you all in the next video.